How am I going to walk along this glacier? I'm on the incentive trip as one of the top sales executives in my country, in my company. I have earned it and I am going to do it. But wait, should I be doing it? I'm over 425 pounds and I'm sweating profusely before I even start. I'm just trying to get these spikes on my boots. And I feel everyone staring at me. I know what they are thinking. John shouldn't be doing this. John is too heavy. John is going to slow us down. It feels like cinder blocks on my feet as I take my first steps. I'm already lagging behind the group as we walk along the Mona Perino Glacier in Argentina. I'm being as careful as I can, and then I slip, landing on my left hip. I didn't feel the pain. All I could think about was the look of pity in my coworker's eyes. I may have been on the trip as one of the top sellers, but in that moment, I was the top loser. Tears were welling up, but I didn't want to let them see. The tour guide comes up to me. John, you have to go back to the boat. We have to keep going on. I take the spikes off, and I walk to the boat. It is a half mile away. I'm angry. I'm frustrated. I'm defeated. Why am I on this earth? If I died, no one would care. I don't matter. I start looking over the rock faces, seriously contemplating throwing myself over. Out of the corner of my eye, I catch a piece of the glacier falling into the water. And part of me wants to be that ice. If I fell in the water, no one would care. But I don't have the guts to end my life. A few months later, three days after my 40th birthday, I found myself at the hospital, suffering a pulmonary embolism and blood clots in my right leg. The doctors didn't even know how I survived. As I lay in the hospital bed, my sister Debbie walks in and says, you are going to die and you will never see your nephew graduate. That was my wake-up call. But there's a problem. I didn't know where to start. I'm over 200 pounds overweight, and I'm in bad shape. All that mattered to me was work. I love my profession and the company I worked for. That, my career demanded constant travel and long days. It turns out people all over the world travel for a living and are first forced to make choices. Those choices result in sacrifices, sacrifices of time, sacrifices of relationships, and sacrifices of health. These sacrifices come with risk. The executive travel lifestyle can be dangerous. And it almost cost me my life. Each year, companies send workers on more than 500 million domestic flights a year, according to the Global Business Travel Association. Of those flights, more than 50% are for corporate sales executives. One thing I hear over and over again is how lucky I am to travel for work. On a typical day, wake up at 4 a.m., get to the airport, go through security, find some food, sit on a plane for hours, hop in a rental car, go to meetings, feed some customers at night, only to wake up early the next morning and do it all over again. So glamorous, right? The executive travel lifestyle, as advertised, is alluring, yet is this delicate balance between health versus career. Executives all over the world sacrifice their health 
in pursuit of money, making quota, and recognition. These decisions don't just affect the person making them, it affects everyone around them, including friends and family. Business travel takes a toll. In fact, people traveling the most have the poor self-rated health, the worst anxiety symptoms, and the worst depression symptoms. It's a big clustering of health issues. According to a 2018 study by the uh, Institute for uh, Travel and Business. As I reflect back on my own career, I suffered everything from anxiety, alcohol dependence, trouble sleeping, obesity, depression, and thoughts of suicide. According to a 2018 study by the Harvard Business Review, the more a person travels, the more pronounced these symptoms are. So the odds of being obese are 92% higher for those that travel 21 nights a month versus those that travel just six. These are type A, type A individuals, high impact earners that never go into a meeting cold or unprepared, yet in between these meetings, there's little or there's a lack of preparedness for the rigors of the travel world. Even worse, from a corporate perspective, there's little, if any, education for health optimization while traveling for work. Worst case scenario, if not dealt with or left unchecked, these choices can result in catastrophic effects. In the four years since Argentina, there's been three people I know that died because of their travel lifestyle. These people weren't jet setters that made a lot of money and popped champagne. These individuals were, among other things, business owners that created jobs for hundreds of people. They did missionary work, helping thousands of people throughout the world. They created inventions that changed business and society. We are losing our future leaders. The executive travel lifestyle is a toxic health spiral that could potentially cost us our lives. If you are a traveling executive or no one, there's some good news. Despite the grim details I have shared, the fastest path to staying healthy while traveling involves breaking three habits. One, belief patterns. Two, water intake. Three, sleep quality. One, belief patterns. This is our inner narrative. Everything we do from how we deal with stress, how much exercise we get, how much sleep we get, and the choices we make at customer lunches and dinner are all habits we have learned. We often just tell ourselves, this is life on the road without once questioning it. Changing your belief pattern starts with asking one question. Is there a better way? For example, clients I work with tell me they feel trapped when they get to the airport with the lack of food options. I found just by spending a few minutes at home before I leave to the airport packing healthy snacks, I was never trapped when I entered the airport. By taking each belief pattern and replacing it with a new habit, habit you can start changing your belief patterns. After a few months, you can completely re reprogram yourself so you can thrive and excel on the road. Second, water intake. Poor hydration is the number one problem I see with traveling executives. In fact, a study by the New York Hospital Cornell Medical Center found that 95% of Americans are chronically dehydrated. When you are chronically dehydrated, this leads to a lack of energy throughout the day, leading to daytime fatigue, headaches, and sleep disruption, to name a few. We as executives do many things that affect <clears throat> our hydration from drinking too much coffee, too many sugary caffeinated beverages, and too much alcohol on top of all the flights we take. The number one thing I get my clients to start working on is slowly replace that soda and alcohol with water. Even get that little glass of water in before each meal. 
One pro tip I share with executives is take a glass of water, sit it by your nightstand, and drink it as soon as you wake up. This can wake you up better than coffee and set you on the path for better hydration. Third, sleep quality. When we travel, there are many things that happen that destroy our sleep cadence, from time zone changes, stress, watching TV, or working on the computer late at night. The most immediate thing we can do to start getting better sleep is start instituting an electronic curfew as close to 9 p.m. as possible. Then, in your hotel, start making it your sleep sanctuary. Reduce the lights in the room and make it a little colder than you want. Then, start working on mindfulness practices like meditation, gratitude, and deep breathing before you lay down to sleep. Changing habits isn't easy, yet if you do it one by one, it has proven to be effective. By doing it slowly, you build momentum and resilience. Reflecting when I first got it, when I was in the hospital after my birthday, I knew intuitively I couldn't change overnight. If I tried to change every one of my habits, I would be doomed to fail. So I chose a different approach. First, I started working on my caloric intake. Then, I started to move more consistently, taking walks on a daily basis. Once I was 95% consistent with each habit, then I started layering on new habits like structured workouts. This snowballed into massive change where I lost over 150 pounds in 11 months. All while doing a job I love. At work, I felt better. I was more resilient. And I was even making more money. In fact, my nephew Jonathan said out of the blue, Uncle John, I'm so proud of you. The executive travel lifestyle can be dangerous. Therefore, we need to take matters into our own hands. No one is going to do it for us. Let's commit to breaking these three, three habits, belief patterns, water intake, and sleep quality. Imagine being that traveling executive that masters the delicate balance between health and travel. Your choices matter. Your habits matter, and you matter. Thank you.